All right. So good day. I will be discussing loops for your CC program class. And now I would like you to imagine these types of scenarios that you may possibly encounter. So first is that you are tasked to create a program that computes for the sum of the numbers from 1 to 100. Second is that you are tasked to make a game that runs until the player's health runs out. And third is that you are tasked to create a foolproof input system that asks for specific input from the user. Now, as you, as you may have noticed here in our three scenarios, you may notice that there is a similarity in between these scenarios and that they are or they require something of a repeating task to do. So how do you approach this problem? And th this is where loops come in. So loops in C programming and essentially programming in general allows the developer to create repeated tasks for a specific um, use case. So there are types of loops that you may use, such as conditional loops, which allow the developer to make loops depending on a certain condition that, may, that they may create. So these will only run and they will only end on a specific condition that is set by the user. You have your while loops and your do while loops for your conditional loops. And you have a for loop for your range based loops. Range based loops will start at a specific value and will end at a specific value that is also set by you, the developer. So now let's move on to actual coding of the loops. So, as you may have seen here, we already have our skeleton code written. And Let's first discuss conditional loops. So conditional loops, as you may recall, they are your while and do while loops. So while loops, as um, I will translate in a bit, they will only run at a specific condition that is set by the user. So think of it this way. Until a certain condition is met, here or maybe until a certain condition is met here the while loop will run what's inside this while loop will run so let's say um you have here an int value an int number let's say one while you want to create a while loop that runs if the number is one so let's say we want to do this by making a while loop. And then inside the parentheses, here is our condition. While the number is equal to 1. This is the same as doing your conditionals for your CC prog one class, like if and else ifs. So here is essentially your loop. While the number is 1, continue to run what's inside this while loop. So what will be the inside of our while loop? Let's say we just want to print um, this is number one. Oh, let's put, oh, okay. Let's put an end line, but let me show you what happens if we don't put an end line here. So let's run the program. So as you can see, it is, you may, may see that the program runs infinitely. It will run if you just um, leave this here, then continue to eat, continue to attend your classes, and then go home and then check your code here. This, this will just run infinitely. Because as you can see, your number is 1 here. You set your number 1 to be here, and then you have the while loop here. The while loop checks if the number is 1. Okay. The number, the number value is 1. Let's print. This is number 1. Let's move on to line 12. Okay, that's the end of the while loop. Let's go back to line 9, which is your condition checker for the while loop. If the condition passes, the while loop will still continue. So the number is still 1. So it will print. This is number 1. And this goes on and on and on and on and on up until you change the number 
value here, which is still 1. So unless you change the number value here inside the while loop, the while loop will still continue to run endlessly. This is considered as an infinite loop. You may have heard this during your classes or you may encounter this while you are coding for your MP or for your exercises. This is what's considered an infinite loop. So how do we prevent infinite loops? As I have said before, we need to have a certain stopper. Stopper for your condition. So let's say while number is 1, let's print this is number 1. But we want to stop our loop and continue to the end of our program. So how do we do that? Let's change the value of 1. So number is now 2. Let's set number to 2. What this does here is that while number is equal to 1, and it's actually true, the number is 1. So it will continue to print. This is number 1. But if we go to line 13 and then line 14, the number value is now set to 2. So, okay, the number is set to 2. The loop ends and we go back to line 9 to check if the condition still remains to be true. So, if we check, the number is actually 2. So now, do we check? Is 2 equal to 1? It's false. It's false. 2 is not equal to 1. So this means that the loop or maybe the condition now proves to be false. The while loop is now terminated. So that's your termination um, condition. If something proves to be false here in your condition checker, that's your stopper. All right. So let's see this. Let's run the code. And as you can see here, this is number one, the sentence, is only printed once. Because, sure, you have declared in line seven that number is equal to one. Okay, number is equal to one. And then in line nine, you have your while loop condition check. Is number equal to one? Yes, that's true. So now, since that's true, print F, this is number one. This is the the result yan yung output okay move on now that, that now that you have printed this is number 1 we move on to line 13 which is essentially a comment so comments are not processed comments are not um, read in the compiler so feel free to use comments in your code but what's important here is line 14 line 14 is where you changed your number value into 2 so since you change your number value into 2, number now, when the while loop ends you, and you go back to line 9 to check, number is now 2. So is 2 equal to 1? That's false. So since that condition is false, that um, while loop will now terminate. It will end. Thus, the while loop ends, you move on to line 16, which is basically nothing. And then line 17, your ending statement for your main program. And that's that ends your program. This is number one, is printed once. So that's your stopper for your while loops. And that's essentially how while loops work. You put in a condition, you do something here inside, anything depending on what you aim to do, and then make sure to have to have a stopper or to have an incrementor or decrementor. Incrementor or decrementor. Decrementor. So for incrementors, let's say you have a condition that um, is not reliant on the equality of a number. Let's say your condition is reliant on the range while number is less than or equal to 10. This still proves to be true because is 1 less than or equal to 10? That's true. So, in order for us to reach a certain um, a certain end for this while condition, we need something called an incrementor. An incrementor means 
a value or something, a, a statement that adds to the current state of the variable. In this case, our incrementor, our incrementor statement is number plus plus. That's essentially saying number is equal to number plus one. That's that's your shorthand way of saying number is equal to number plus one. You're adding the number value one to itself. Okay. So if you want something uh, a little more custom to your liking, you can say number plus equals three. This means number, number is equal to number plus three. Okay, so back to our original plan, which is to increment it just by one. As you can see here, let's trace. Let's tra let's trace the program flow. You have here in your number one, you have here your condition check. Is one less than or equal to ten? This is true, so this will print. This is number one. You have your incrementor statement here, which is number plus plus. What number plus plus does here is that it changes the value of the number variable into something that is plus one of it. So what is one, the current value of number, plus one? It's two. So since the number is two, we go back here. So eto na, this one here is your end of the loop. So we go back to line nine. Is 2 less than or equal to 10? This is true. Print again, this is number 1. And then increment it again by 1. Once you increment it again by 1, that 2, that value 2, now becomes 3. So now, are you seeing the pattern? So this goes on and on and on up until you reach a certain condition. Let's say your number value here is 10. You have reached the number value 10. Is number 10 less than or equal to 10? It's still true. It's less than or equal to. So this one will still print. This is number 1. And then increment again. So now your number 10 value will become 11. So if it's 11, this will now check. Is 11 less than or equal to 10? This will now become false. So false... This will terminate. The loop will es essentially terminate. It will end. And then going on to your end of the program. If we run this code, you can see this is number one is printed. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times. Exactly as how we planned it to be. As you can see also in our code output, you can see that um, our output is not really that much um, nice to look at because we don't have a new line in our printf statement. So that means it will just print um, from the left side to the right side. Yeah. So that this is why Using a new line is essential if you want your um, code to be, or if you're if you want your output to be um, readable. So if we run that again, see, much better to read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times it printed. All right. So that's essence essentially your while loops. Keep in mind that you still have much more, much, much more to do when you're using while loops. One thing is checking if a certain variable is true or false. One thing also could be checking for number ranges, just like what we did earlier, and many, many more. So feel free to experiment with loops and while loops especially. Now we move on to our second conditional loop, which is a do-while loop. A do-while loop is a very special kind of while loop that the caveat here is do-whiles do-whiles perform first 
then check. Whiles, perf uh, check, then perform. So you may see the difference here. Do while loops, they do first, then check. Hence the name. Do this while this, the condition. In the while loop, it checks the condition first, as you may have seen earlier. It checks the condition first, then it performs what's inside the loop body. But do whiles, and let's write here a sample of a do while loop, do while. So this is your syntax for a do while loop. So do this, do what's inside, while this. So what's your perfect um, use cases for this? A perfect use case that I can think of is when you perform um, input checks. So if you remember the scenario earlier, we want a foolproof input system wherein it checks for a specific input by the user. So using a do-while loop is probably the best one that you can use. So let's say, let's create that, a foolproof input system for a specific input. So do, perform this first, printf, um, enter, uh, let's say the letter A, okay? Enter the letter capital A. We want just the capital A. Okay, and then scan F. Let's create here a um, variable car, test car. Then scan F, percent C, uh, test car. All right. So as you may see here, this two lines, these two lines of code will run no matter the situation it is. They will run first. They will run for a first time up until a condition is met. And they will continue to run until a condition is met. So that's the behavior of two while loops. So enter the letter A and then scan F for a for the letter A. So what will you put inside here of this while condition? While, do this while test car is not equal to capital A. That's your, consider this or think of this as your terminating condition. This will be your terminating condition. Once test car equates, equates, meaning this is equal, or what you have inputted is equal to A, it will mean that the do while loop will now terminate. But until then, until then that the user inputs anything other than the capital A, it will continue to run lines 12 and 13. So let's try that here. So enter the letter A. So let's say we just want um, letter D. See, as you can see here, enter the letter A is displayed twice. So if you if your prof has discussed um, special characters in inputs such as uh, the return character, which is essentially a new line, the return character is essentially, as I have said, a character, which is this. It's a new line. This is your return character here. It's essentially what displays when you press the enter key, whenever or even if you press here at scan F. So that is why you see the letter A um, displayed twice. But okay, um, let's try letter N. See, it won't accept the F. It won't accept R. Okay. Let's try the small letter A. See, it won't even accept the small letter A. Let's try the big letter A. See, the big letter A terminates the program, or sorry, terminates the loop, which essentially terminates the program. See? So that's your do while loop. It performs something first, then checks. 
So no matter what your um, conditions will be for your while here, whatever you put here in your do, be careful because this will run uh, no matter what your situation is. So this will run only once. It will run again if it has not met what you have set here in the while loop, uh, in the while condition. Okay, so that's your um, that's your do while loop. So now let's move on to range, uh, range loops, range loops. So range loops essentially they start from a certain value, they end at a certain value. So here's your for loop. Dito papasok yung for loop nyo. For, you have three parameters when you move on to for loops or when you use for loops. The first parameter is your starting value. Your starting value. Where will your for loop start? Your second value for the for loop is a condition. A condition for termination. That's your terminating condition, as I would say earlier, for your while loops. So what will be your terminating condition here? i is less than, let's say, 10. If i is greater than or equal to 10, the for loop terminates. All right? Third one is your incrementor or your decrementor. Incrementor somewhat looks like this. Or maybe looks like this, or something like this, or this, depending on your um, loop behavior and what you may need for your program. But I prefer to have it I++ so that we can increment it by 1. We can plus 1. If you want a decrementor, a decrementor works by putting a minus minus, or maybe a minus equals 5, uh, 4, sorry or 5, or 6, or 10, depending on how you would decrement your uh, value. But since our condition requires us to be less than or equal to 10, let's say uh, we want it to increment by 1. And then let's say we want to print the numbers from 0 to 10. Or, or sorry, 0 to 9. So essentially, you just call printf. Printf, percent D. And then i. i here is your value for the while loop. So as you can see here, and let's put a new line so that our output will be nice to look at. As you can see here, you have printed the numbers 0 to 9. If you want something, um, let's say you want the number 10, and then you want to count down from 10 to 0. So start your loop, your for loop at 10. And then set your terminating condition to i is greater than or equal to 0. Because this means that if your i value reaches 0, it will still print f the number. It will still print the number. Because if you use i is greater than 0, once your i reaches 0, this condition will be false because zero is not greater than or greater than zero. You would need to be you would need you would need it to be greater than or equal to zero for zero to print. And then for your incrementor or decrementor, you want to use a decrementor, a decrementor. So i minus minus because I just wanted to decrement by one. Then print f. And let's run. As you can see here, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 0. The 0 is printed. If we use the greater than 0 condition, as you can see, it will only print up until 1. 0 is not included. All right, that's your range based loops. So now that you have. Um, Ex you are you're exposed to the different kinds of loops. Let's um, go to a certain problem here. So let's do a little exercise, just one. 
let's write a program that gets the sum of all the digits of a given integer number. All right? So you may pause the video just um, to process the problem, but I will continue to solve this. So let's solve this. Um, let's create our skeleton code. Hashtag include stdio.h. And then let's create our main function. All right. Now that we have created our main function, we want to have different um, variables that represent our um, pro problem solving process. So, okay. First, let's get a certain, um, let's have a variable for our actual number itself. So let's say we want our um, number to be an integer. Of course, it's an integer because it's in the problem. An integer um, given number. Okay. Let's set the given number to a certain value called um, maybe 4968. Yeah, 4968. And then we want a certain integer variable also that carries or yeah, that carries the digit value that we will assign to later. Because our job here is to get the sum of all the digits. This implies or this means that we would have to extract a digit. All right? So let's call that variable digit holder. Let's not give it a value as of now. It will. It's okay to not give it a value for now because we will assign it later. And then we also want an integer that represents for the sum of the digits. We want something, we want a variable that holds the sum. All right? So essentially, we'll just call it sum. And then we will give this a value. We will give this a value that is initialized to zero. Take note that is initializing the sum to zero is important because it, because if you do not initialize the value, you will get a certain garbage value when you print it. So, all right, we want this to be initialized to zero. All right, so now that we have our three essential uh, variables, we, we can move on to the process of extracting the digits from the given number. We want the while loop to terminate if the given number is less than zero, okay? This loop will perform until the given number is still greater than zero. This loop will terminate if the number is less than or, ev or even equal to zero, all right? So now, while the given number is greater than zero, let's go on to extract the digit. So, um, digit holder, Let's assign something to the digit holder now. Digit holder is equal to given number modulo modulo 10. Why did we use the modulo operator here? If you recall, using modulo operators extracts the remainder of your divided digit. So if we use the module here, you're essentially doing 4968 divided by 10 which is essentially 496. 496 or 8. Or 8 means your remainder 8. What modulo gets is that remainder. So essentially, you would notice that what the remainder gets is the last digit or essentially the digit of the number here. So we only want it to be modulo 10. If we do it to be modulo 100, if we do modulo 100, you would get the number 68, 68. Because what this does is that um, 4968 divided by 100, which means you only get um, 49. All right? And then, so, yeah. You'll only get here. You'll only get to some this, these numbers here. So, um. We'll use modulo 10 
to extract the digit and then assign that to the digit order. Remember that we used sum or we initialize sum to be zero. This is why it's important to initialize it to zero because we're essentially adding something to itself. If you're adding something to a garbage value, you will as you will eventually get a garbage value. So we will use sub plus equals the digit holder. What's inside the digit holder? You're essentially saying here sum is equal to sum plus digit holder. All right. Then move on, moving on. Once we have that sum incremented by our digit holder, we want the number now, we want the given number now to be reduced. Okay? Because we want all the digits, so we have to reduce the number. So, what we're going to do is to divide it, flat divide it by 10. Again, so digit holder, oh, uh, sorry, given number, number, All right. This means that we're going to divide itself by 10. Dividing itself by 10, you will get 496. And then once you extract the digit here by modulo 10, you will get the number 6. So now, if we do that all over, all over, and all over again, we will eventually get to a certain point that the given number will be less than 0. Once that's less than 0, we will terminate the loop or the loop will terminate, and then we can now print our sub. All right. Let's try to give this a run. And this says 27. Is 27 correct? Let's check. 4 plus 9 is 13. 13 plus 6 is 18. Uh, sorry, 9 plus 6 is 15, then 19. Sorry. My math is not mathing. <laughs> 9 plus 6 is 15, plus 4 is 19. 19 plus 8 is, yeah, 27. Sorry for that. So we are correct. 27 is the sum of all the digits of 4968. All right. So that's actually it. You may pause the video to um, uh, take a screenshot. So what if we want the numbers? One 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 four one is. It will essentially run the same, outputting four as your sum. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Or three plus one is four. All right. So yeah, that's it for loops. Please continue to practice loops as um this is only the beginning of a very very long and very very complex uh, relationship with loops. I can already I can already tell you that um you will be using loops not only in CC Prog one but uh for all of your courses in your um course for all of the subjects that you may encounter loops are a very important tool when performing repeated tasks so let's say we go back to our um scenarios here you're tasked to create a program that computes for the for the sum of the numbers from one to one hundred. So what you will use here, you can use something of a while loop, just like what we did earlier. You can also use a for loop. So let me show you here. How can you use a for loop to, com to compute for the sum of the numbers from 1 to 100? So let's um, remove the given number. Let's remove that digit holder. But let's keep the sum. Let's keep the sum. And let's keep the sum uh, printf. But we will create here a for loop. Let's create an int, uh, an int variable here i, uh, just for our um incrementor. So i is equal to uh one. Uh, i is less than or equal to one hundred. Then i plus plus. We wanted to increment by one, and then sum plus equals i. Then print f the sum. As you can see here, 50, 50, 5050. What you can um verify that later, but that's how you would implement something like getting the sum from 
a range of numbers from 1 to maybe 100 or maybe 50 to 100. All right? So, okay, going back to our presentation, you are tasked to create a game that runs until the player's health runs out. You may use a while loop for this as I have showed you earlier. Um, a while loop terminates up, up until a certain condition is met. Or a while loop runs, sorry, a while loop runs up until a certain condition is met for it to terminate. So you can say while the player's health is greater than um, 100 or greater than 0. Once the player's health reaches 0, that will, amend, that will immediately terminate, ending the game. Third scenario, you are tasked to create a foolproof input system that asks for a specific input from the user. We have done this earlier using a do-while loop. Keep in mind, a do-while loop runs for a first time no matter what your situation is. It will run only once first and then it will continue to check your while condition. If the while condition passes or evaluates to be true, what you have put inside the do will continue to run. It will continue to run, continue to run up until the while condition that you have put at the bottom is not, or is actually met. All right? So recall that we have did a do while loop that checks for the user's input. If the user's input is not equal to the capital A, it will continue to run. But when I pressed or when I typed the capital A, it immediately ended. So that's it. That's your do while loops. All right. So that's everything for your loops for CC Prog 1. As I have said, please continue to practice. Please continue to experiment loops. Um, one thing that you can do if you want to test your loops knowledge is you can first create your pyramids, create a display of pyramids with asterisks, or create the number pyramid, or maybe the Pascal's triangle. So that's the challenge for you. All right. So once again, um, I am Audrey from PTS, and this has been your loops introduction for your CC Prog 1. Thank you. Thank you.